If I could teach marketing to someone, what would I teach them? So there's nothing, in, I think the word Twitter might appear once in the whole book. It's not about social media. It is not about growth rating points or even conversion. It's about work that matters for people who care. Because what marketers do is we make change happen. Okay, which change? For who? So the first third of the book is what marketers do is we decide who we are seeking to change. Who's it for? And what's it for? And I'm amazed at how often people don't even consider this. They think they're making average stuff for average people. And if they just yell at about it enough, then their Kickstarter will hit $19 million. Well, yeah, every once in a while a Kickstarter needs to do that, but almost none of them do. That the truly successful ones or the truly successful online stores or local bakeries or the person who's trying to raise money for their charity are specific. They're not general. There only used to be demographics. The only thing a marketer could pay attention to is what kind of car do you drive? How old are you? What's your income? You could buy all of those things from a mailing list company. But once the internet showed up, particularly Google, but mostly Facebook, we could say, this is for people who like that. This is for people who dream of that. This is for people who believe this. Those are psychographics. It doesn't matter what your skin color is. It doesn't matter what your income is. It's what's your narrative inside. So going forward, the old school marketer still talks about demographics. They're wasting their time. What we need to understand is in every zip code, there are people of almost every psychographic perception. And what we have to do as brand marketers is say it's for you and it's not for you. And I didn't separate you because of who your parents were. I separated you because of what you believe and what you dream of. And if you want to switch what you dream and what you believe of, it might be for you. Okay, so let's start with the, the data collection thing. Every time I go to Amazon, they rearrange the whole store for me. And every time I go to a regular bookstore, I am frustrated because they don't. It bought, like, what is, what are the cat books? I don't like cats. Every time you know I'm coming, just take all the cat books out of the store. They don't do that for me. Amazon does. So when this is done properly, people are happy it's being done because it's being done for them, not to them. When it's done improperly, it's when you get a phone call from your credit card company and they say, we noticed you've been going to a lot of singles bars and strip clubs. Here's a coupon for free venereal disease testing. You don't want that phone call because you didn't ask for that engagement with them, right? So it's not about privacy, it's about being surprised. Okay, so now we go to serve some people. I'll begin by saying, I don't think you have any business being a marketer unless you have empathy for the people you are seeking to serve. So what do I mean by empathy? I mean, you don't know what I know. You don't want what I want. You don't believe what I believe. Here, I made this. It might be for you. Now, the best way to begin as an amateur marketer is to start with people who believe what you believe and want what you want. Great. Do you know who those people are? Can you imagine them? Start there. You will find some people in that segment because you made it for you, right? So if you love to surf and to be on social media, then inventing the hero camera, probably a good idea because you knew what it's like to be one of those people. But... Sony should have invented the hero camera and they didn't because there wasn't a professional marketer on the scene who said, I don't surf. I don't want to be on social media, but I could imagine what that would be like. And so we begin with that. We begin by asserting what a group who believes a thing might want to do. How do you do that? Well, you can learn it a lot by noticing. You can learn a lot by saying, why is there a line at the Supreme store? Why are people buying poke bowls, right? Why are people doing this? Why are people doing that? And those people who do that, they're also doing this, which has nothing to do with that, but they're all doing it. Is it because they're all doing it or because there's something those things have in common, a feeling? And so what our job is as marketers is to suss out that feeling, make an assertion, and then present it to those people. Not spend a lot of time in focus groups because people don't know what they want. They just know what they dream of. Dropbox was built to solve a personal need. 
that's great as far as it goes. But if you want to be a professional marketer, you got to do it again for somebody else's need. And the way you do that is by gaining the empathy to imagine what it is to be in their shoes. You don't have to be a woman to make pantyhose. You just have to be empath. You seek to make change. You are changing a group of people who do work with leverage. You can visualize who those people are. And the people who aren't those people, you're not trying to change them. You have a mission. The medium could change. You would stop using video and switch to podcasting, but your mission would be consistent. And so I begin there, which is too often we get hung up by reverse engineering our mission. We say, I'm making money doing X, so I will come up with a phrase that will let me keep doing X. That's not what you or I are talking about. When I think about someone like Blake at Tom's Shoes, Blake wanted to have a business that made money, but also cared very much about the footprint that he was leaving behind, no pun intended, with Tom's. And so then, yes, they can make coffee and they can make sunglasses and they can make the other things that they've tried to make because it's not about shoes. It's how do I get an early adopter fashionista who wants a story she can tell her friends to be able to buy a product that's going to have a better positive impact on the world than the one she's currently buying. I think the two biggest things are connected. Number one, your factory isn't worth much anymore. It used to be worth everything. So you had to defend the factory. You had to say, this is what we know how to make, so this is what we sell. But now, everything's a click away, so you can sell anything you want. So don't come at this as, the customer's wrong, I have this briefcase full of stuff, this is what I have to sell. It's, how can I solve this person's problem? How can I market with them instead of at them? And the second thing is, attention used to be cheap. Like, think about it. The phrase CPM. The M doesn't stand for a million. It stands for a thousand. I'm not sure why. Cost per thousand. We're buying people's lives a thousand at a time for pocket change. And since it's so cheap, what the hell? Put a talking bear up. Do this. Interrupt this. Crazy Eddie. Whatever. It's cheap. We'll just try something else tomorrow. And now it's not. Like all of a sudden, now it's not. Now it's really expensive. A thousand true fans, 10,000 true fans, it's enough to build a whole company. A hundred thousand true fans, you're a, it's a home run. A hundred thousand, that's it. So the mindset of, oh, I don't have to just show up arrogantly saying, I insist. I can show up and listen and assert. And everyone is not the goal. Cannot be the goal. Someone, someone is the goal.